What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the U.S. Open PGA Championship show, whatever it is. Um, I always get the golf tournaments mixed up. <laughs> it's the U.S. Open. Um, anyway, Sheets, uh, we've got an interesting uh, golf thing going on, but you said you wanted to talk some, some takes, and I said, let's just wait till we get on air. So why don't we jump out with it? All right, so here, here's the thing. All right? well, one thing about, about DFS content overall with respect to golf, I find two things particularly – I don't want to say annoying. They're not annoying. They're just kind of interesting to me. That for a, a sport that is so kind of data driven, and there's you know what I mean, like there's so many numbers involved or whatever. So much of the of the takes end up being just such like feel and narrative driven. It's like really really funny. Like I, I watched one show where they were talking about different quotes coming out of some of these players as if it's going to impact the way that they freaking hit the fairway somehow, you know? So uh, I don't know where I left off, but um, with um, respect to DFS content on, uh, in general, I find it amazing how, much, how many takes are completely predicated based on narratives and, and, and I don't want to say nonsense, but just extraneous stuff. Like I heard one of, there was one show where they dedicated like a third of their time like analyzing like quotes of different players, like, to, as if someone is going to, someone's quotes are going to be motivating him to, to actually hit the fairway more often than, than not on, on a course like the U.S. Open. It's, and then, like, you see some people say, I just kind of have a feeling that this guy is going to do something or whatever it is. And, and I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong, but I find, I find it kind of interesting um, that that's what it actually comes down to. The other thing, which is just hopelessly tilting, okay? It's not tilting, really, but I guess I learned to expect it is if you go through your average, you know, golf podcasts or even do one or two of them, you'll end up with people recommending literally every golfer in the field, okay? And it's just ridiculous, all right? Uh, it, it, it's, uh, you, yeah, of course you can make a case for anybody. You know, it's golf, and, but that's not really all too helpful. And then what you'll see is, and I tweeted this, I hope people understood the sarcasm of this earlier, is – You'll see, if this, okay, so here for a course fit situation, this is what we need for the U.S. Open. So it's a really, really long course, so we're really going to need to favor people with distance off the tee. Um, and, you know, the other thing is that, like, the, the rough on the outside, the outer cuts are so kind of violent that you really want to be in the fairway. So you want, like, you want to have a good combination of you want to have distance, and you also want to have a guy that can, like, get it into the fairway. And then you know what? You know, because of that, you have you need guys with good approach games to the to the, to the green. You know, especially guys with long irons. So the real good long iron players are going to be good, and you know people are going to have to be chopping it out of the rough. So if you're good with the hundred game wedge, hundred yard and in wedge, that's what we're looking for. And boy, these greens are going to be so fast and gross and undulating that you really want a good putter. So these are the guys you really want to look for. I'm like, gee, thanks. Yeah, you know, thanks a bunch. You know what I mean? So you're you and and. It's really unhelpful. Um, so what I'm going to want to do, again, is when I – look, I've done research. I have ideas. And, yeah, there are going to be some guys I go over. And, yeah, all the guys that I don't go over, it doesn't mean they can't win. It doesn't mean they have no chance to win. But I'm going to highlight guys that I like. I'm going to take some stands. I'm not going to play 20,000 liners where I get every combination. And, and hopefully you guys will, will derive something from it. Yeah, man, and you've, you've gone in the right direction. And, and actually, it's funny because we've actually both had some, our fair share of pretty decent sweat so far. Sure. We haven't gotten there quite, but we came close. I mean, we had the, you know, the first week I think we played, we, were, we got the, the 20th and the 25th and the million. You know, I remember we weren't playing that many lineups. We can do some things here. I actually feel good. And I think there's, so I think there's a couple of reasons for why the narrative-driven thing happens real quick before we start getting into the actual lineups. I think that part of the reason is that going back to Tiger, which is where most people's love of golf who are doing this came from. I mean, or at least he was the biggest person most of their life golfing for him. Narrative driven things have been different. He's one of those guys where if he says, I feel good, he's come out and played well. When he says, I don't feel good. I'm still shaking things off. I'm 75, 80%. That's been pretty much the case. Um, that's part of it to me. The other part is that you don't, they don't have enough other things to go on in a sport that this highly variant. So you go with whatever you can. And I think there's a lot of room to, to, to pivot away from what other people are doing because of that. So so let's get into it, man. Let's, uh, let's talk about it. I I'd like to, while I do that, uh, I'm going to pull up the weather report real quick. Why don't you pull up your screen and we'll start talking about uh, different computers. Sure thing. Uh, 
Is there somebody, before we do that, is there somebody you, you feel like you're, you're most locked into, somebody you've got the most ownership in or anything that you want I do. Okay. I actually do. I, I really like a guy a lot. Um, and part of it is, is being stubborn. So part of it is not stubborn, is that, again, one thing that's, uh, I'm kind of a stickler for is, is how accurate or inaccurate some ownership projections are. Because in golf, I mean, you really got to, you know, you, you really need to get, get these right or at least be close. And um, one thing I could do with respect to feel is just kind of gauge just based on all the most popular content out there, what guys are just being mentioned the least in a way. Um, and uh, so I'll, I'll tell you the one, uh, we'll get right to it if you want. Like my favorite guy on, on with, with Price and all this stuff, I'm really into Victor Hovland um, this week. Um, and uh, we'll get into more of that when we get there. But I, 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 that, that's probably going to be the guy I, I end up having the most of. I love it. I mean, I actually, that's, uh, I think he's going to be low owned for once, which we never get him at. I like Hovland quite a bit. I actually like another, another one of these young kids in the similar vein. I like Neiman quite a bit also, uh, a little bit lower. But you, but you know what? You, you, you were, you're getting into something a little bit. You're alluding to something. I really was almost going to talk about this in this form. I was going to talk about this idea of, I don't want to say stacking in the wrong way, but focusing on these young guys, you know, and, 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 and trying to go out of your way to play these dudes like Neiman and, and Berger and, and, uh, and Wolf and Hovland and guys like that. Yeah, I agree. I think that that's been – Certainly the route to go. It's obviously a little less appealing depending on the weather, which is why I'm trying to call that up right now. But, um, but let's, get, let's, let's go to your tier, to, tier. Like, we can even talk about each of these top players because I think they, they all have certainly strong cases, but I think that there's interesting uh, – going to be interesting ownership on them. So I'm guessing that you prefer Rom above the, the other top guys? Not necessarily. So, so um, the way I'm looking at this – now, first of all, from a numbers perspective, and a lot of people look to Vegas for um, – for guidance, right, on, on, on how they should be pricing these guys or whatever it is. And first thing I would remind you is, is that in general, um, Vegas, yeah, in some sense, it's a representation of a guy's winning chances. But on a purer sense, it's a representation of the public's perception of their winning chances. So you don't really want to just say, okay, Vegas puts him at this, so this is what his actual winning chances are. With that said, I will say, even though I'm probably not going to play him, um, there's if you, if you buy that, that winning chances in Vegas correlate to what, what, what DFS strategies should be, is, is DJ is actually, like, criminally mispriced on DFS. Um, like, they have it, like, six to one or something like that, which I, we could never do in a million years. But if you accept that as being gospel, for example, then he should probably be about 13K, right, on DraftKings. I just happen to think that it's yeah. just a miserable price in Vegas. You know what I mean? So, um, that's the first thing. I'm not going to be playing him. I, I, I like um, I like Ram and JT. Those are those are my two favorites from the um, uh, from the top tier. And yeah, I do like I do like Ram. I mean, a little bit more. I mean, not 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 really that much more. One thing I would say, by the way, before we get into this, is that with respect to this type of event and with respect to scoring, um, there's not going to be like a lot of of birdies and eagles you know what I mean and, and the reason I bring that up is sometimes when you play DFS golf you can take guys that you know can have a decent amount of bogeys but also you know birdies and eagles and make up some of those DFS points in, in you know all those bonuses and stuff but I think those are going to be really tough to come by and, and and finishing position is going to really just play like a big big role you know so the guys that you might want to play in some other tournaments that have like kind of like a lot of variance or, you know like guys like like who, who guys like Finau maybe guys like guys like put a bogey up and then go back to back Eagles or something like that. Like I don't want guys like that. I want guys that are just going to hopefully finish well. Um, that's just the way I, I, I kind of looked at it. Um, so I like I like Ram and DJ the best. Uh, excuse me, Ram and, and Thomas the best. I'm not going to play. Um, uh, I'm not going to play Rory. I'm not going to play um, uh, Bryson DeChambeau if you consider him at the top. Uh, Morikawa, I think is fine. I just don't think I'm going to get there. I'm, I'm going to stick with JT and Rom at the top. And, 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 oh, we consider Xander at the top. Uh, yes, he rates really, really well for me. I've just got to watch the ownership on him because he rates to be highly owned anyway. And as I've talked about on this show before, he always gets about five, 10% more than 5% more than people projecting for. So right. um, 
I like Robin Thomas uh, the best, and then Xander under that. Yeah, so I, I think Xander is starting, you know, at, at the 10K range, just um, I like, I think I have the most ownership of Xander, Justin Thomas, and uh, Morikawa. Okay. Um, I like, I am going to go back to the Rory thing again. I'm just looking at these tournaments. And also, by the way, like these difficult fields, I still trust him in these situations more than I do some of the other guys. And, um, again, another guy who's good off the tee. Like, there's a lot of things to like about him. And what I really like is that you're going to have, like, very, very low ownership on a guy who, you know, I would – like, obviously wouldn't surprise anybody if he won the tournament. But he's um, – I mean, he's just, you're getting, like, really, really unusual ownership. I don't know if Rory's ever been this low owned in DFS probably since we started doing this stuff. How much do you think he's going to be owned? Five to ten percent. Yeah, I have him at 15, so – Interesting. I have him at eight right now and one, and I have him at six on the other. But What do you have DeShambo at? Uh, low. Um, it's uh, about, about 8%. Yeah. But, you know, it's interesting because I'm looking over here, and I'm looking at the weather right now, and, you know, we've got – okay, so you got nine-mile-an-hour wind uh, throughout most of the day. Uh, Thursday, 14 miles on Friday, 12 on Saturday, 11 on Sunday. That's enough – to make a little bit of a difference. And I want players who play in difficult conditions and, and can do that. And look, if there's a guy who can shoot you two, two under, uh, Rory seems to be the guy. Doesn't that almost matter what the course is? He always shoots the same thing. Um, so I kind of like, uh, I kind of like Rory as the, uh, as the uh, play. I, again, I, I feel like I've mentioned him all year long. He's hurt me at times. He's had some decent runs, but never quite got there. Uh, I do like Rory a little bit as a pivot off of these chalky guys. I'm going to have less Rom and DJ than the field by a significant amount. Um, that's sort of those, that's sort of the guys I'm deciding to fade up top. I think they both end up in the 20 plus percent range probably. And I think that I can, I can do better. And I'm okay with eating a little bit of the show play and uh, more cow uh, chalk at a cheaper price. You playing any of the Shambo or no? Like right now I have him like, like as just below where the field has him, but basically like not, not overwhelmingly loving it. Um, you know, it's interesting. There's really nobody talking about it. And he could end up even being lower owned than I think that he's projected right now. So maybe he is an interesting pivot off of these other guys. I mean, if he finds his, 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 his accuracy at all out of the fairway, I mean, it's a really, really long course. I mean, if he, if he you know, if he, if he gets it going, uh, he'll, 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 be, he'll be hitting eight iron when everybody else is hitting six. And it's, um, that's an edge. And, and, and there's what, what, maybe a, just a couple of par fives. And, and it's very tough to reach. Um, so only like a handful of these guys are going to be able to even reach these things. So, so if he gets it going, uh, and somehow fa finds the fairways, um, I mean, his distance is going to be like a big deal. I and mean, that's the thing I struggle with on this type with this, with this course in this tournament is, is how much to really reward distance because if it, again, from the GPP, right. If in fact they're finding the fairway with that distance, I mean, that's a, just an enormous edge to have on a course like this. Um, but if you don't find the fairway, you're just, you're just screwed, you know? Yeah, agreed. And um, I can definitely see the argument for him, especially because you've got what's probably going to be a pretty chalky Webb Simpson just beneath him. And it's certainly like, if you look at it, just who's going to, you know, is, is Webb Simpson really going to gonna outscore him three out of four, 75% of the time here? Probably not. And that's what the ownership is going to reflect. So I would actually think that that would be an interesting pivot off of Webb. You think Webb? You think Webb Simpson can win the tournament? I don't love him to win this tournament, but I like him to be to be in the mix. I just and that's not enough of a reason to to play a ton of a guy who's going to be really popular at nine point seven. But of course, he he can definitely win it. But it's not it doesn't seem like it suits him as much. Are, are we really just is the ownership being driven? I guess because of his price is my question. Yeah, I guess I, I don't. Again, for me on this tournament, if I'm going to pay ten k, I really want like legit winning chances I, I don't I don't think this is his course man I, I think it's too long I just do um and uh I, I guess he's a I guess he's a good bet to get the top 10 or something like that the accuracy part of it is probably the part why people are gravitating towards him because it is that tricky you know and he's pretty yeah, accurate that's 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 my guess I'm just I'm just guessing because no, I'm sure he's a good play but but I, I would rather um I don't even, and just Xander just, just gets it off a tee batter, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah, they, I think Xander's going to be the most popular. I, I think he's probably. the most popular player, right? Like, or going to be at least one of the two. Yeah, yeah. As, as usual. And, and honestly, I, I just did an update, and, and Webb's you know, ownership starts to look like it's creeping down a tiny bit. It's still in the 20s, but, like, still not quite as high as I saw it before. Um, 
I, I really think that, uh, yeah, I mean, you have the same thing with Cantlay sort of a little bit, you know, a, a guy who I'm actually can't lay because he's going to be a little lower on. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll play a little bit of can't lay too. And I'll play a little bit of uh, burger, but I'm not going to go crazy with these guys. And I'll probably be beneath the feel on all of them with the, in the, in the nine uh, K range with the exception of until we get all the way down to nine K and that's Matsuyama. I'm not that interested in fee now, even though I understand the argument for it because long course I'll have a tiny bit of them, but I'm not going to go crazy with him. Um, I would rather play, you know, the, the show flame more cow guys or jump down, um, show play more cow, uh, uh, Thomas, even Rom. I like a little, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to fade the chalk with Rom, but maybe I don't really, and then DJ, but maybe I don't need to do as much as I thought I did. Um, cause I don't really like many of these guys in the nine K's as much as, uh, the field seems to. How about yeah. You? I mean, you want to head down a little bit. I mean, you, I don't know if you mentioned him earlier in the week when we were just, you know, well, how about the nine Ks? How do you feel about the nine K guys? Like, what do you feel about? Oh yeah. So, I mean, Hideki, I like him and he's, yeah. I presume he's going to be really popular, but I, I like him. He's popular, but I don't think he's going to be like the most popular. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, I like Hideki a lot. I actually like Cantlay a decent amount. Uh, again, I gotta, I gotta figure out these ownerships because again, I thought I had, I had McElroy much, much higher than, than you did. And, and, and I gotta just work on that a little bit more before I finalize these things. But, um, but I think Cantley's fine, um, and uh, and Berger. I like Berger. I, I like him a lot, actually. Um, uh, He's been incredible overall. Like, I mean, sort of having like the one of the crazy seasons that no one's really talking too much about. <laughs> as, a, as a matter of fact, I like him more than Cantley. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think that's going to be. I mean, I think Berger's going to be popular. I think it's the only thing. But that's okay. You can you can play you can play a little bit of chalk. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? All right. Um, yeah, I'm into Matsuyama the most, and in in, he's my highest owned player uh, other than Shofley above 9K. Okay, that's fair enough. But my highest owned player overall is just under 9K. If we want to tra transition over there, and that's uh, Tommy Fleetwood. I am all over Fleetwood. I, I love him in this, on, in this environment. I think he plays really, really well on these tough courses. And um, I like the price. I feel like, you know, I, uh, I'm going to live and die on this one, um, on the Fleetwood uh, McElroy thing for some reason. But, uh, but I really do like Fleetwood this week. He's my, one of my highest owned, if not my highest owned player. Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, he, he, he struggled a little bit. Then he went and he played. And uh, I like this, this approach. I think, if I'm not mistaken, he went and he played some, some minor, uh, some minor uh, uh, circuit event or something like that over the last couple of weeks uh, to kind of get his game back. Um, and, uh, he looks yeah. Good. He looks good. What's that? I just heard lately that he looks good from a few different people, but I don't really know that I can put too much too much on that. But that's that's interesting to hear. <laughs> yeah. So 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 a guy who um, who I presume is going to be really popular. Um, I don't know. He rates to be really good for me. Um, so I got to check this. But but Patrick Reed at eighty five hundred is um, yeah rates to, rates to be pretty good. He's busted people as chalk before. Yep. Um, and he's the one with the with the with the with the with the with the speeches and the and the, and the and the trash talk and he's ready to go and and he does he is the type he will kind of grind out you know what I mean in tough conditions sometimes so he's probably one of my favorite guys uh, in that in that eight k range um, Adam Scott for whatever reason uh, he's fine all right uh, he's fine I think he's got the temperament for this type of course um i'm not going to be playing tiger this week i'm just gonna be same as usual i'm just gonna be rooting for him but not playing him i i've heard some stuff about justin rose being a grinder and playing i, I don't like him i don't like fowler um scheffler was going to be really chalky before he got got ruled out um i do like hatton uh down at 8100 um and then these other guys that are kind of uh, in this lineup here, that which you can see, like I like Fitzpatrick, and Fitzpatrick is not exactly the longest guy in the world, so it's kind of like uh, goes against what I said a little bit, um, but that's fine. Um, and I like Hovland, as I mentioned, and the other, and that's what I meant. So Fitzpatrick, right? So Fitzpatrick, uh, Hovland, and Hatton would be my three favorite guys from the eight K. Yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm basically uh, mostly with you. The Reed thing, I'm okay with fading too much of it if it gets too chalky. Sure. But I'm, I, 
I actually will take some shots on Tiger. I'm just always going to be a 10% Tiger when he's not going to be owned. And I, I don't actually, again, I don't think he's been as bad as he's looked. And I actually think he's a better play than, than just his name. No interest in Jason Day for me. Um, no, uh, Adam Scott will probably be just beneath the field. Again, a little bit ahead of the field on Tiger. I'll probably be with the field on Patrick Reed, uh, beneath the field or, or near the field on Justin Rose, depending on where he ends up. No interest in Fowler. Um, I love Hatton and, and Hovland in this range. Those are my favorite guys. I'm with you on that part. Um, you want to go down to these? I'm not finding Fitzpatrick as much, and it's interesting because he's a guy who I do like to play, but it okay. seems odd to me that all the advanced numbers that in projections and win prop of everything is so high on him, but I don't entirely understand why because it doesn't seem like a course like made for him. It's not. But why is he being treated as if he's – is he? I mean, I didn't know. I mean, I have him like maybe 12th best value or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't, it's not like a big deal. Yeah. His ownership is, is reasonably high, and he's got the highest win percentage of anybody below Patrick Reed. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And, uh, and Adam Scott has a reasonable one, too, or just ahead of him. But, but he's ahead of most of the guys who are ahead of him. And I just feel like that's kind of interesting. Um, anyway. uh, under, un, under 8K um, – I'm, I'm tr people are telling me that I shouldn't be playing Harris English on this course, but I, I don't, I, I think I might anyway. Um, so I like him. I like uh, Matthew Wolf, as I mentioned before, um, just like this kid. <laughs> he, he projects well and I like him, you know, and he's young and, and he could hit the crap out of the ball, you know? Um, I don't think I'm going to be playing Sun J M. Um He would be my next guy in this range that I like the most. And then I, what I struggle with, again, are these kind of short hitters that are going to be in the fairway, like, uh, like Brendan Todd. Um, not exactly sure what I want to do with him. If, he, he's going to be, if he's going to be as low old as I think he might be, I might just play him. But I, I, you know, I'm not expecting a top 10 from him. You know what I mean? I'm expecting him to make the cut and you know, maybe sneak in the top 20. I just don't think he's got the distance to, to really just make a lot of headway on here. So. Those would be the guys I'm going to play from the 7K range. The rest, um, you know, I'm not going to – we could just go over them. I'm not going to play Woodland or Answer or Lowry or Kisner, Spieth, Garcia, like any of these guys that I mentioned. Uh, you mentioned Neiman. Uh, you could talk more about him. I'm just not going to get to him. Um, I'm going to just push back a tiny bit on the Brendan Todd things for a minute. He's sure. been, other than the first two weeks since the restart, I, he's just been, like, super locked in consistent, and at this price you're going to – be happy with the guy who finishes top 20. And that's basically what he's been sort of a near lock to do almost, except for the one cut at Wyndham and then the, uh, the Northern trust where he had the bad Saturday. Um, I think he's interesting. I, I, I know, I know it's a, it's not his ideal course, but it, uh, he's just solid, consistent. He does not miss fairways very much. I, I feel like he's, um, he's a guy who I do have interest in. I'm definitely going to be ahead of the field on him. Um, I just feel, and a little bit is biased. Like I, I've, He's been the guy I've sort of stuck with all year, and he's been he's just been really, really good. Um, consistently good, not winning tournaments than maybe, but still good enough. Um, and uh, he, so, yeah, so I have him highly high up there. I, I'll i be below the field on English. I'll be probably right near the field on Casey. I like Answer a little bit, and I like Woodland a little bit. Again, not, not going crazy. I was all ready to play a ton of Matt Wolf, and even a little bit of wind for some reason gets me a little bit nervous with him. Um, but I'm still going to go for it. I just think that I believe in this kid in the long term, and you know we might be getting a really good discounted value. He's also play, he also played well the last tough course that he played, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna play a little bit of him. I do like Oosthuizen quite a bit. Um, he's the other one who in this range sort of stands out to me, and I'm sort of not sure what to do what I'm doing yet on Sung Jay and Kisner. Um, I, I don't think I'm gonna end up with much of them. You like Neiman? You were, you were mentioning Neiman before. I like Neiman quite a bit. Yeah, he's um. I mean, first of all, he's going to be crazy low owned. I, another kid who I absolutely believe in it actually reminds me a little bit of like, a, I don't want to say a poor man's Hovland. Just like he's, he's a little bit, uh, he's, he's sort of quietly put up like really good numbers without actually, you know, maybe having the, the, the monster tournaments you need. Oops, I'm sorry. Let me grab my, uh, my Neiman information. Cause I made a little notes, made a little notes on him. Um, I think he's fine on this course, by the way. Um, he's actually been pretty consistent with, uh, you know, in terms of staying on fairways. I mean, good recency stuff because he won, you know, he tied for third at, uh, at the BMW. Um, 
I, I just think the kid's talented and doesn't get treated like it But in, in terms of price. And if you look at it, I think he's only missed – he's missed the two cuts. You know what I mean? But other than that, like, you know, he's got a fifth. He's got a third. He's, you know, mostly in the 30s or whatever like that. At 7,400, I don't know exactly I'm going to, like, load up on him. I just think he's another one of these – these young guys who I, I think has a really bright future. And I don't think the gap between him and these other guys is that, is that great. And he's not going to have any ownership. Maybe, maybe I don't like him quite as much as I initially thought I did. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's it from that range. right? Uh, only other guy for me to mention down there is Ian Poulter. I uh, will definitely have some exposure to Ian Poulter. I like him in a little bit tougher conditions. I know he's not the biggest driver in the world, but tends to play well in these tough courses. So going to have a little bit of that. Okay, so the way I look at this is, yeah, you you could you could you could build lineups with nothing but eight K guys, right? And 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 be sort of comfortable with it, you know, and and you know have reasonable chances for some of them to make a top five or one of them to make a top five. But I, you, I really feel as though you need one of those. You're going to need one of those top guys with with real good winning upside, or winning winning chances in your lineup. So. I mean, with that said, uh, I, I do think that you need to to find guys um, below this range to kind of take shots on um, if you want to win a big one. That I don't know, maybe maybe you talk me into more of that because I, you know, uh, but I think especially for this tournament, I, I just don't think the winner is going to come from the. I just don't think the winner is going to come from the 8K range. I just don't think it's going to happen. I just think that one of those top guys we talked about is just going to win, um, and. So with that said, if you want to spend for one of those guys, I mean, it would be nice to, to be able to, to gamble with some of these guys in the 7K range. And I, I'll just throw the two that I like that I'm going to use. And it, it's, pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty fishy. But um, uh, Kokrak is one guy. And, again, the theme of, for me this week is distance. He's, like, ranked eighth in, in total distance. Now, he's pretty fishy with respect to, to driving accuracy. Um, but you know what? You can't have everything in life. <laughs> so so uh, I'm going to try him at 6,800. And the other guy that I like under 6,800 that I like is, uh, is, uh, is Brian Harmon. Um, so those are the two guys that I'm going to just kind of live with under, six, under 60, under 7K. Um, what, what do you like down here? Yeah, I actually, I mean, I've got, I've got Harmon uh, somewhere. I'm going to have him between 15 and 25%. So I like him quite a bit. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Yeah, I actually feel pretty good about, but I, but I, again, I'm, I'm starting, I'm starting to, to question it a little bit more because there's other guys that have sort of come on to a little bit. So I've got to see how it shakes out. Oh, I nice. like Alex Noren a ton at 71. I know we didn't talk about, we, he's a little higher, but we didn't talk about him. I don't understand um, some, some of the way these pricings work and, and even some of the advanced stats may not tell you this guy is the greatest or whatever. And he also, some of the, some of his results have been on uh, some of the sub tours, but like, listen to these like results, you know, so he's tied 40, tied eight, tied for eight, tied for 22nd, tied for nine, tied for third. Those are his last five tournaments. Um, I don't mind any of that <laughs> on this particular course at 7,100. He's just been in really good form. Um, I think sort of an underrated golfer in general. And a lot of these Europeans get overlooked in these things. And I think he's another one. I, he's a guy I plan to be pretty heavily exposed to. And a couple people who I know who love golf turned me on to him and just think that he's like a much – sort of better under the radar golf under the radar golfer. So I'm, I'm going to be a little bit heavier on him this week. Um, I think he could definitely make a nice run. He's been really good in these tough when we've had these tough fields with all the good players. So I, I like him. My number one guy down here, other than, well, I guess he's number two in that range, but uh, I really like Chez, Chez Revy. Uh Really good on these courses. Uh, even that he's not a huge driver. You look I'm looking for more consistency and maybe avoidance more than you are maybe. Um, so that's, I like Reby quite a bit and, um, I think he's the best player. I think he's the best point per dollar option under seven K that I feel the safest about, which I don't feel like totally safe, but I feel somewhat safe about. Um, I have a tiny bit of interest in Thomas Peters. Uh, I, I did have a 5% program in for Coke rack, but nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, and, uh, I'm look, man, I'm going to stay on brand a little bit and at least get a few shares of Benny on. Um, it's funny. Somebody wrote. Uh, a tweet the other day and said it was a, for to Benny on it and it said my bets for the U.S. Open Ben on and to win Ben on to t top ten all this stuff and and on responded to it he wrote just so you know I shot eight over yesterday <laughs> I saw that I saw that actually <laughs> that was awesome man and that, honestly that shouldn't be a reason you want to play somebody but it kind of like I don't know what it was it's just I, I really like this guy but I, I I'm just gonna I mean it's more of a fun play but 
I still think there's some merit for him. He's also played really well on these tough courses. He actually played well on long courses, which is odd because he's not a huge driver. Um, and I like Kevin Streelman. Those are my guys. I'll tell you the, the other guy, by the way, um, uh, just below Kokrak, I'm, I'm also going to play is um, – Yes is Munoz. Yeah. I knew you were going to say that. I was like ready for the Munoz. I actually feel like Munoz is a pretty solid play. And um, I mean, it's just worth, he's a guy worth I, I, don't, I don't think so at all. I don't think he's solid at all. But, but no, I think, uh, no, I mean, he's, he's in good shot. form. He's, you know what I mean? Like he's, he's a, he's a, he can hit the hell out of the ball. I mean, if it's, if it's what you're asking for, he's super cheap and he's going to be low owned. Why not? We'll see. I mean, Adam Hadwin, this is not his course, but at 6,600, it kind of raises an eyebrow because you're like, this guy's a cut maker. You know what I mean? Like, I, I kind of think you can you can feel okay about having a guy like Adam Hadwin in your lineup too, um, or taking a shot with Ryan Palmer. Do, do you so. like anything? I, I I didn't like him, but I, I heard someone make an okay case for him. I just, I'm not going to get to him. Do you like any of uh, Van Ruyen or no? Same same thing with the South African guys for me. Like, I, I think they all you know you could merit all you could say all of them. They they're used to wind and they're used to having long courses. That's how they play out there. So from that uh, perspective. I do like him a little bit, but I don't like him to go – I'm not going to go crazy on him. We're talking about like maybe a 10 to 15% play. Um, but I am going to try and load up on these guys because I'm telling you, it happens every tournament. Okay. A couple of these guys end up making the top 10, and you can just – and they're always like 1% or 2% owned. So I'm spreading those guys out and fading some of the chalkier uh, higher-end guys and, and sort of you know building a couple – I'm going to put two of Shofley and Morikawa and Rory and Thomas in most of my lineups. And then I'm going to get a couple of the lower guys and then middle it out. Yeah, sounds good. I'm just, I'm just kind of trolling the bottom here to see if there's anybody I have to Anybody else worth noting? Yeah. Rory, I I, like, Rory Sabatini I've sometimes played, but I don't think so. He's an interesting one because the, the conditions, I don't like him in these things. But I like – I mean, he, he was the late add-on, you know, after the, the COVID stuff for the horse field. So right. you, could, you could take a shot there. I mean, I don't mind if you throw – like, he's a guy who can put up numbers. So if he – if he shoots five over, he's going to be better probably than everybody else who shot five over, <laughs> you know? Um, that's what he's got going for him. I mean, if I had less um, English, i do this. I could probably get another. And then you can get one of these. Then you can get Webb if you wanted him, for example. Or DeChambeau if you want. Or DeChambeau if I want. Ah, you know what? Um, but yeah, the, I mean, other thing, the other thing you need, by the way, on this, on, this, on this course, I mean, you need to have some kind of freaking – some kind of temperament, you know what I mean? Because you're not going to be in the fairway every freaking round, you know what I mean? And you know, I, I, just, I just know if I play the Shambo, he's going to put a freaking 10 up there. He's just going to. I mean, just like, I don't know. I, th I think a lot of guys are going to put up, not, maybe not 10s, but they're going to put up big numbers and a lot of holes. So I'm okay. You know, Sheets, one thing I wanted to talk real quickly about before we get out of here, because I think it's been important, is noticing, especially on the no-cut tournaments like we've had lately, really trying to pick the guys who can put up better numbers and, and just guys who are a little bit more, basically you kind of want guys who are a little bit more wild. Um, what's odd is like guys like Rory who actually has been making more birdies, but he's also been making more bogeys than most guys have um, guys who can maybe make more Eagles. This is a tougher course for a lot of that. So I'm looking more at avoidance than a lot of, than I usually would, but there is something to be said for like, there are guys, if, if you have, you have guys who finish, you know, 19th that are way outscoring guys who finish 10th and it happens every week. So trying to, to do that, and maybe, again, this is not the week for it, but it sort of does speak a little bit to maybe taking a shot on some of these longer hitters and guys who might be able to get there in two on some of those far fives or, or even get there in three because I think it's going to be tricky for some of the people to do that even. Um, anyway, so that's, that's just something I wanted to mention. And Benny Yon is all, was one of those guys who always fits that category because he's so up and down with his putter. Um, he, he tends to put up higher scores than everyone else in his score. I, I wonder if, like, the real – expert like i don't even know if they exist but like the real expert golf dfs guys i wonder if they do stuff like um like like style stacking and stuff like that you know like um of course they do. no that's what i mean i mean like they'll, they'll play like six guys that are really good in the wind you know what i mean like and just uh, with the idea that if it's really really windy that they'll all correlate well together and stuff yeah i don't yeah. know yeah okay i think they do um I, I, uh, one, I just want to mention one last guy, and I'm not excited about this guy, but I actually think, like, I've watched enough good golf from him this year and enough bad golf, but I, I feel like he's the other cheap one I, I'm going to have some exposure to, and that's going to be Jill Dahman. Um, it's Ooh, okay. I think he's a little bit of a better, like, he's just, he's been in, 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 competi in ugh, he's competed pretty deep in a lot of these things. So he's another one, and these are like your large field trying to win the million ones where I, I'll play a guy like him that much, but. 
you know, he's also coming off a 20th at the BMW. He was 10th um, at the PGA Championship a couple weeks before, uh, before in, uh, on the, in early uh, August. And, uh, you know, had a 20th right before that. He's just been in pretty good form overall. And he is a guy who can get hot. Um, he's a cut maker with upside, I feel like, for the most part. And uh, 6,400 is interesting. All right. So why don't we do this? We do, let's do what we do. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick an under 7K guy to make the, make the cut. You want to do that? Yeah. An under 7K guy to make the cut. We're going to do an under 8K guy to make the top uh, 20. We're going to take an under 9K guy to make the top uh, 10 and then the winner of the tournament. Okay. Let's want to start at the bottom? Yeah. So uh, let's do the uh, um, under 7K to make the cut. Okay. Um, for me, that's Ches Revy. Yeah. Um, and again, like for me, I, the guys I'm playing my lineup are not going to be the guys that fit that. Um mm -hmm. So I am going to go with – man, um, No, he's not going to make the cut. <laughs> um, yeah, like you know – right? People like him. He's not like a, an off the board as much as you think he is. Okay, but Reeve's not a – Reeve's not a – Reeve's a really, really strong player for that. So I'll go, I'll go with the best guy. I'll go with uh, Van Roy. Oh, I like it. Okay. Um, all right, 7K. Under 8K, you got to make the top 20. Okay, so my favorite guy, uh, I guess that I'm going to go – it's got to be wrong. under 8K, right? <laughs> um, yeah. That's the tricky part because I got the guys at 8K, but I'll, I guess I'll take Oosthuizen. Yeah. Um, I guess I can't say nobody. You know what I'll do? To, just to sneak into the top 20, like literally exactly 20th, I'm going to go Brandon Todd. I like, that's, who, that's who my other guy was going to be. So. Yeah, exactly 20th. Okay. Well, the 8K range is, is a tough one because I like a lot of guys, but I know who I'm going to pick, so I'll take Tom. So under 9K, you got to make the top 10. Fleetwood. And uh, I will go um, to who I said. I will go to Hovland. Who? Hovland. Oh, I love it. All right. Yeah, I thought you were going to say Patrick Reed. Um, all right, over 9K. To no, just anybody to win the tournament. Uh, okay. I want to take my really long shot is Fleetwood, but – Ooh, you're going to double up with the same dude, huh? Oh, I don't want to do it, though. I think that I'll uh, – I'm stuck between Morikawa, Shofle, and I'll just – you know, F it. I'll just say Hideki because I'm going to have probably more of Hideki than I do those guys. Yeah, I'm, I can't I, I can't have Hovland winning the tournament, unfortunately. Um, um, all right, I'll – I'm just not going to do it. I'm just not going to do the chalk. I'm just not going to do it. I got to give you somebody else. You know what? I'll give, I'll give you the chalk. I'll, I'll, I'm going to say uh, I'm going to go wrong. You're going to go wrong? Okay. Yep. All right, guys. Hopefully this was helpful. We enjoyed it. Um, we'll be back uh, doing our daily show, and we'll probably touch on some golf at times on the uh, QLTV show. Make sure you're on that on QLTV. And uh, for Sheets, I'm Bobby saying we'll see you at the top of leaderboards. Good luck this weekend.